Today we are going to talk about the advantages that pro commercial studios have over home studios, but more importantly, how do we get your home studio to be as close to these huge, professional, incredible studios as we possibly can. Let's get into it. The first and most obvious advantage that commercial studios have over home studios is acoustic treatment. Nearly all commercial studios have a fabric wall system like you see behind me here. Now, a lot of people have asked, how come I don't have any acoustic treatment on my walls? And what a lot of you don't realize is this is all acoustic treatment. But the most important thing is that you want your first reflection points covered. So you can Google acoustic treatment first reflection points. You'll see some diagrams that will help you know exactly where to put the acoustic treatment. And the thing that is most overlooked by home studios is the ceiling cloud. You really, really need a ceiling cloud. I think a ceiling cloud might be the most important piece of acoustic treatment in a studio, especially for mixing and really for tracking, because there's a huge amount of slap that happens between the floor and the ceiling and you want to get rid of all of that. Now, I don't think you necessarily need a fabric wall system. The important thing here is that your room sounds incredible for whatever it is that you're doing. And if you've got your room set up for mixing, that is a completely different acoustic treatment set than tracking drums. And so while I probably can't get too into exactly how you should treat your room, having a room that is really well treated and sounds incredible is probably the most important thing in the difference between most home studios and most commercial studios. If you haven't seen my studio build yet, uh, I'll link it down below and it kind of shows the, the whole process of doing the stu this entire studio build, but also the fabric wall system and kind of what all goes into that. So the next thing that I see every commercial studio have that very, very few home studios have is something that is basically free. Ugh, water sitting everywhere, just literally sitting everywhere. When I was doing sessions in these bigger studios, it was crazy to me how much more at ease I was when every time I needed a drink of water or every time the singer needed a drink of water, there was just water within arm's reach of anywhere that they were. And even water ready to go on the music stand for tracking vocals. And then having some sort of Keurig machine, you don't, you don't need all this, some kind of an espresso nut, but even have just a, a cheap $100 Keurig machine with bottles of water, huge long ways to make your home studio seem more professional. The next thing that pretty much every commercial studio has over pretty much every home studio is the quality of the power coming in through the outlets. Most commercial studios have some sort of transformers in them. This is actually my fifth or sixth studio room here and more than one of my studios had actual dedicated big huge transformers that got wired into the entire uh, entire breaker panel and the whole studio run off of isolating transformers. Now that's a it's a very common thing in commercial studios and the reason why this is important is because it makes everything much more quiet. Your guitar amps are quieter, your microphones have lower signal to noise ratios. The cleaner your power is, the quieter every piece of equipment in your room is. So this is actually a really important topic, especially when you start, you know, stacking up dozens or maybe even hundreds of channels on top of each other, each with a little bit of noise. Now I've had a bunch of power conditioners and I've tried a bunch of them. Like six months ago, five months ago, whenever it was, I got this radial power conditioner and I'm really, really happy with it for a couple reasons. Now, obviously the most important thing is that a power conditioner filters power, that it actually makes the power cleaner. And uh, I don't know much about the technical details on how this works, but this radial certainly does do that. It also has more outlets than any other power conditioner I've ever had. I really like that it has three on front and it has a USB cable right on the front or a USB port so you can keep your iPhone charged, whatever you want. I think that's a really great feature. So I'll put links down below for this and for everything else, but get yourself some power conditioners. It's super, super important for your home studio. The next thing that commercial studios have over home studios is space for storage. Now this might not seem like a big deal to you guys, but as you start getting more gear, more cases and more boxes build up, and I mean, just the amount of cases I have for microphones alone takes up a lot of space. All right, the most annoying part of having a home studio is certainly the storage side of things. Let's see if it's gonna get too dark. Here is one of my storage areas. Now this is just literally at the top of my stairway 
And uh, there's a little cubby back here that was never gonna get used for anything. So I found a shelf that fit just perfectly right here. Let's shed some light on the subject. And so I found a shelf that would fit perfectly right here. It's not maybe the best looking thing in the world, but you know what this does is it keeps all of this crap from being just stacked around the studio, keeps it all localized in one place. Now I've got shelves everywhere here in the studio. I've got guitar pedals on shelves. I've got IT computer stuff on shelves. I've got microphone power supplies on shelves. Uh, and I'll put links down below to the shelves that I use, but getting stuff cleaned up and organized, having a place for everything, that's a, that's a big deal. This makes your studio feel more professional because there's a place for everything. And that's one of the things that almost every commercial studio has. The next thing that separates home studios from commercial studios in a pretty significant way is microphone options. Now my microphones are kind of strewn about all over the place at the moment, but I think it's super important to have a selection of different microphones. They don't all have to be crazy expensive. What you want is at least decent quality microphones that have different personalities. So for a long time, I just had kind of two microphones, like a 47 style and then like a C12 style. And so if you can, if you can get both of those, that's huge. And then if you can start slotting stuff in between something like a 67 style, something like a 251 style, the more options that you can have to fill out that whole spectrum of sounds for microphones microphones, the higher likelihood you can truly match a microphone to the singer or whatever that you're recording so that way your tracks sound the best. A lot of people, especially in the home studio world, overlook how important finding the right microphone for the singer or for the acoustic or whatever is, but it's a huge deal. It's, it's one of the things that separates the most pro recordings from kind of amateur recording. And when you match a microphone to a singer, when you find the right microphone for a singer, their voice is gonna sound amazing and they're gonna love you for it. This is the most important part. Not only is it gonna sound great, but they're gonna love you for it because they've never heard their voice sound that way. Now I'll put links below to all the microphones that I have. The next thing that commercial studios have over home studios is the looks. I hate to be so shallow about it, but it is true and it makes a difference. The looks of your studio, having a studio that looks super pro, I think that this is a really big deal. Not only is this huge for posting photos and, and getting clients, that's a huge marketing thing that your studio looks super pro, but also it makes the clients happier to spend time there because they're now spending time in a cool looking place that can take all their TikToks and all their Instagram photos and show all their friends. But this is a big deal, this is really important. So the more professional looking your setup is, the better. When I was designing this room, a, a quite a bit of effort went into how it was going to look. Even my last studio, when I first moved to Nashville, some of you have been following for this long, my last studio was in a 12 foot, 10 foot by 12 foot apartment bedroom, but it looked like a pro studio with a ceiling cloud and sound panels and everything. And I don't, this doesn't even have to be a lot of gear. I don't care if you have a laptop and a pair of monitors with an Apollo twin on the desk. Like there's a way to make things look pro and clean and well put together. And then there's obviously a way to make it look like a pile of mess that's in your bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> try to try to be the former. The next thing is a separate entrance. If it's at all possible for your home studio to have a separate entrance from your house so people don't walk through your house or through your living space to get to the studio, that's ideal. Unfortunately, that's not an option for a lot of home studios. So the next best thing is to at least make sure that there are doors closing off your studio space from your living space. One, this helps separate the studio from the rest of your living space, but also this can really help with with noise. Just having a door between yourself and the rest of the house or the rest of your apartment can make a big difference. And if you're interested in kind of going the next step, you can put an exterior door in with an actual seal. Soundproof doors is that's a whole nother thing, which we're going to get to that as well. Physically separating your living space from your studio music space, I think is a really big deal. The next thing is somewhere for your clients to sit and relax. Even if your space is super small, even if it's all contained within a single room, there needs to be somewhere for them to sit and chill, preferably enough room for a couple of them to sit and chill, but you gotta, you gotta make do with what you got. A separate room with a couch and a lounge and all that, that's, that's great. But if you don't have that, just have somewhere comfortable for people to sit. 
Now this next thing is more on the functionality side of things. It's you, how prepared are you for the session before your client gets there? One of the best things about a pro commercial studio is when you book the studio, they know, generally speaking, what you're gonna be working on. And a lot of them will even ask you what kind of microphones you want set up or what preamps, what signal chains you want set up. And when you get there to do the session, those things are already hooked up, they've been line checked and they are ready to go. So something that I do here is try to make sure that I know what we're working on and however much of it I can have set up before the client gets here, that's my goal. If we're tracking acoustic guitar, I want microphones set up, line checked and ready to go with a, with a stool already out. If we're tracking vocals here, I've got either the vocal microphone that I know we're gonna use up or I've already decided based on hearing the singer's voice before what couple options we're gonna try out and they're all set up and ready to go. This sort of logistic stuff just makes sessions go way smoother. It keeps the artist from sitting around twiddling their thumbs, makes them feel like things are more professional and more smooth. These next couple things are if you are real serious about having an incredible home studio. Having a dedicated bathroom, huge thing. If you can have a bathroom that's right off the studio so people don't have to walk through your house to get to the bathroom, that's incredible, goes a long ways to make things feel more professional. The next thing is HVAC. If you can have a separate dedicated HVAC, even if it's just a mini split in the room, if you can have a separate HVAC with a separate thermostat, that is a huge deal. I'm, I'm really lucky to have done all these things here in my studio when we built this house. And I cannot tell you how often downstairs in the rest of the house, the heat is on. But up here in the studio, the air conditioning is on because of the heat of all of the gear or because of the heat of lots of people being in the room or both at the same time. Man, the separate HVAC is a lifesaver. If you can do it, it's an investment worth making. The next thing is like soundproof windows and doors. How soundproofed is your workspace? Is your workspace quiet? There's a whole bunch of things that you can do. Double layers of drywall with green glue, RC channel, uh, you know, floating floors, soundproof doors, soundproof windows. There's a whole bunch of things that you can do and it's probably not appropriate for this video, but if you are ultimately serious about having your home studio be the most like a commercial studio, these are things that you would look at. Don't forget links in the description below for everything or as many things as I can put down there that we talked about in this video. Thank you guys for watching. I hope this helped you. And if it did, please share it with your friends. And uh, thank you guys for 90,000 subs. We, get, we hit 90,000 yesterday, so, or two days ago. Thank you very much. All right, we'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. Yeah, yeah.